Mortgage Marketing Expert Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Treadwell. We're here with S.A. Ibrahim. S.A., how you doing, bud? Very good, very good, and delighted to be on your podcast. Well, we appreciate uh, you taking a few minutes and chatting with us. You just got off stage uh, here at Create Wow Summit here in San Ramon, California, and uh, we're talking about your history as a CEO of Greenpoint Mortgage as well as Radian. Yes, yes. I was uh, very blessed to uh, have the opportunity to work with the amazing teams in both of those places. And, you know, I'm retired and I love my retirement, but uh, I still miss the fantastic people <laughs> I was associated with. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, for those people uh, who are listening who may not necessarily be familiar with your background, um, kind of tell us like a little bit more about what your background was, how you kind of got into the business and kind of what you're up to these days. Uh, absolutely. So first of all, let me start with, I grew up in a small business family in India and uh, thousands of miles away from America, I got smitten by America. So I grew up in India, but surrounded by stars and stripes in my home and, and with the view that I was just biding time to get to America. And I was the only son, so I gave up my inheritance, my father's business to come to America and start from scratch. And I came, I finished undergraduate engineering school in India and came here to go to business school, got my MBA in finance and had geeky quant education <laughs> and felt the world revolve around quantitative sure, models sure. and analytics. And then ended up having to learn the people part, which is what I came to believe is the true driver of success and which is what helped uh, the challenges, two very different challenges that Greenpoint Mortgage and Radian had to achieve. Greenpoint's challenge was one of growth and opportunity and growing faster than the fast growing market in the 1900s and you know, uh, 2000s. And we grew from roughly $6 billion in the rich nations uh, when we put together Greenpoint Mortgage uh, after the acquisition of Headlands and putting Headlands into it to about $60 billion run rate when I left. Oh, wow. That's, that's incredible numbers. And the story at Radian turned out to be, and I didn't know that, when I went there in 2005, but a year and a half later, two years later, the downturn happened. It was a worse downturn than anybody had imagined. And Radian was a company that had huge exposure because the whole nature of the business was to guarantee and ensure credit risk. So we guaranteed default losses or, uh, or foreclosure losses in the mortgage industry. And we had $160 billion of exposure to that. Wow, that's a lot and of exposure. most of our peers, we were in two different businesses, financial guarantee, which was largely guaranteeing municipal bond uh, payments to investors and uh, guaranteeing layers of credit on very complex financial instruments created by the hedge funds and Wall Street firms globally. And uh, uh, we were also in the mortgage insurance business, uh, taking the risk on the first uh, down payment because we insured borrowers who put down less than 20%. Right. So uh, talk about being, you know, in a wrong position at right. the <laughs> beginning of the downturn. We entered the downturn with $160 billion. We were, we were the only one to have exposures to both of those businesses. Wow. And there were casualties on, in both of those businesses. And most of our peers had only one of those businesses and didn't make it. And we had two of those businesses and yet made it. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's crazy. I noticed that you were talking on stage about the two biggest assets that a company has that don't show up on a balance sheet are your partners and your employees. And, yes. And, and is that, was that the key to kind of getting through that downturn in 2007? Absolutely. It's a very uh, sobering moment when you realize that, uh, you know, your company's stock price has gone down to less than a dollar. Uh, your credit ratings have gone down the tubes. Uh, <laughs> You know, you have debt coming due. Uh, your borrowing costs have gone up by five, 6,000 basis points, assuming you can still borrow. <laughs> and so you say, I don't have access to financial resources. So what do I have? And then you are forced to think about how to make the most of what you had. And one of the things we had at Radian was we had an amazing team and we had very good customers. And so I told my team members to say that we're going to come out of it that as long as we manage those two assets that don't show up on any company's balance sheets, but from experience, I can tell you, they are far more important than any other kind of asset. As long as we have those two assets and keep them, we will come out of this. And everybody else follows. So my theory is if you create a company 
where you truly understand and partner with your customers in driving their success, and you truly create an environment where your customers are, uh, your employees are thrilled to work there, and they feel they get a sense of ownership and they will contribute to your success. Uh, those are the two things as a CEO you have to manage in addition to and create in addition to creating a vision of the future. Because if you have those two drivers, then other things, while very important, like the financial strength in your balance sheet and the, the delivering success to your investors, follow. They don't lead. Absolutely. If you just focus on, I want to build a company that does very well for investors. You've got the focus in the wrong place. That should be derived right. from the first two things, and that's yeah. what I learned, and that's what helped us get through the downturn. That's fantastic. And it's great advice. Now, I want to shift gears here just a little bit. Um, obviously, our audience is, is in large part mortgage professionals, a lot of originators and managers and people building teams. What do you think that in, in this kind of climate, in this market, what are things that originators and mortgage professionals should be focusing on on a, on a daily, weekly basis to, to go out and build their businesses? So I'm, the, uh, I'm an investor in uh, a mortgage business that was founded a couple of years ago by a very smart person who was my number two at Greenpoint. And uh, he and I were talking and he's talking about how the business is getting so challenging now. I said, remember uh, from our previous experience, the best opportunity we had was when things got challenging. So in Greenpoint's case, we were a relatively small player and uh, then the financial downturn happened. And of course, you've got to manage your expenses tightly and you've got to watch your bottom line when that is happening, and we did. But we also said, this is the time when we should really be going against the grain and expanding. So we also took that time in the year, the year 2000 to expand our footprint. We doubled our footprint in terms of sales force and, and uh, offices. And perversely, that's the best time to hire good people because Absolutely. they're being let go by others. So we went against the tide. And luckily, we had a parent who supported that, and I'm not trivializing the challenge of that for companies that don't have such a parent. Uh, so we had created this five-year plan of doubling our business from $11 billion in 2000, but which we failed to achieve the 2000 plan, to $22 billion five years later. And because of what we did in 2000, we exited 2001, a year later, with $26.5 billion of rich wow. nations and kept climbing. So, you know, so my advice is to, in every challenge, in every adversary lies opportunity. Change the way of your thinking to, instead of being paralyzed, and I'm not saying, smoke, you know, smoke something and be, be unrealistic. You right. have to deal with the challenge, but also look at the opportunities that lie in your challenge. Same thing at Radiant, when our stock got down to a dollar, Said, you know, well, we have nothing to lose. We can take all these risks. So one of the things I did, and everybody in the company, including my CFO, thought I was crazy. So I went to the head of sales and I said, well, no matter what anybody else tells you, I am telling you and come to me directly if somebody tells you they don't have the money to go hire a lot of salespeople and expand. So we came out of the downturn roaring, writing more new business. My CFO, the terrific person and a great partner turning the company around. But what made us great is everybody in the team came to things from perspectives and what helped us was sometimes he had ideas that turned out to be great. Sometimes I had ideas and this idea I had was to expand and grow. Not only did it keep the employees motivated, but it actually allowed us to write enough new business that overrun the bad business or the more challenging business we'd written before, but it's going against the tide. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's great advice for everybody. You know, the key point in that is that during times of adversity, in times of challenge, that's when the biggest opportunities are there. You know, when we're talking about the mortgage environment now where we have margin compression and, and, and increasing interest rates that people are talking about, that's making it more challenging for the originators that are average. So those folks that really want to excel, that's where the opportunity is to create value for the referral partners, to create value for, you know, uh, the, their, their clients and their customers. And so I, I appreciate, uh, you know, that, that piece of advice. I want to close. I want to be a good steward of your time. The last question we ask everybody is if you could just give one piece of advice to mortgage originators today that they can take uh, to go build their business, what would it be? So be passionate about what you do and remember you're in the mortgage business not to make your secondary market counterparts or anybody else happy, but we who've been in the mortgage business or still are serve an extremely important and patriotic need, you know, need. 
we make home ownership possible and we allow existing homeowners to responsibly manage their home ownership and enjoy the benefits of home ownership. So re remember, we are trying to serve the homeowners of America and keep that in mind and always think about how can we serve them better and don't lose track of that. And then deal with everything else, but never lose track of the fact that we're doing something that is very important, that's critical to the homeowners, and that makes them better citizens and more responsible citizens and, and creates wealth for them and creates a sense of belonging. And it is a great feeling when you go from being a renter to being a homeowner. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. It was a pleasure meeting you. It was a pleasure listening to you on stage. And I look forward to catching up sometime soon. Likewise. Take Thank care. you very much.